my work will be uh, applied mostly to object recognition. And so in object recognition, there's been increasing interest in domain annotation. And especially as we as a field realize that our data sets are really biased. Um, there was a paper at CBPI this year that really brought this into focus with looking at very standard sort of object recognition data sets in the field. Here, I'm showing you an example of what happens if you train and test on uh, Amazon.com type of images. And here we're trying to detect, we're trying to classify object categories. Here's one category, a cup. So here we're doing okay. But then if we use uh, models trained on this data to classify cups in a new domain like uh, an office and a mobile robot with a webcam, then our, our performance drops a bit by a lot. And this uh, turns out this sort of bias occurs in many of the common data sets. So here's some other examples. This is from Caltech 256, which has 256 different categories. And um, for all of these, I'm showing the person, the people category. So here we see the types of images that we have. Um, they're mostly mined from the web, but they're cleaned up. Um, on the right, I'm showing uh, results of raw thing search, image search for people. And so here, you notice that it's uh, more, more noisy. And for example, it has some cartoons. It has some uh, sort of just graphics um, in addition to photographs. And then here on the bottom is another popular data set called Label Me. With people category, here you see uh, really a very extreme shift between these domains, um, where here the people are not even looking at the camera. These are just images taken in outdoor scenes, and people don't even know they're being photographed. So, <clears throat> so this is really the problem I'm interested in. How do we train on uh, such data sets and transfer the models to new domains, new visual domains. And especially, so I've done some work in this area, and recently, um, sorry, this is just showing the drop in performance if you train and test on different data sets. So here we have a pretty extreme drop from 37 to 12% accuracy. So recently I've been interested in this issue of mixed data sets. So for example, here, Notice that some of the photographs are um, actually actual photographs of people, and some are graphics or drawings of people. So maybe what we really have in this particular data set are multiple leading domains, and we just don't know which images come from which domain. So in this talk, um, first I'm going to describe our uh, basic method for domain annotation, and then I'm going to uh, try and start addressing this so domain annotation is domain dependent. Um, and but there's been a lot of work in NLP, and um, there's been work in vision. Uh, in particular, there's some methods that adapt SVM parameters to new domains, new domain domains. Um, but in our work, we're really interested in achieving domain annotation by learning some sort of transformation on the future space. And the advantage here is that we can learn the transformation uh, using source data and a little bit of labeled target examples in some object categories, and then transfer this to new tasks, so new, new categories. Uh, because we don't necessarily want to have to have labeled examples of all possible categories in the target domain. So for example, we can learn the transform of cups and we can transfer it to people. That would be really great. So the idea here is that we have some source domain with a, a rather source, a green source domain and a blue target domain, and the shapes correspond to different categories. And we want to learn a uh, transformation, I'm calling it W, that when applied to the feature space, maps points that belong to the same category in different domains closer together, and vice versa. So that's the main idea. Um, and for that, we're going to use loss functions of this form. Um, so the similarity between uh, point X and a point Y in the source and the target domain is going to be parameterized by the matrix W. So you can think of this as uh, multiplying Y by W, 
essentially mapping y into the source feature space, or vice versa, mapping the source feature into the target space. And um, in this work, we use <coughs> loss functions of this form where if x and y um, have the same label, then this, this, should be, this should be high, this numerator should be high. And if they have different label, then this should be low. So here's an example of a constraint between two images of the same category, but in different domains. And here's a constraint between, a negative constraint between um, examples of different categories. OK, so our input is a set of these constraints. And we are going to assume that the loss functions in general will depend on just the inner product matrix between capital X is all the training uh, features in the source and capital Y is all the target features. A side of these functions, and <coughs> excuse me, so our objective function is to minimize uh, this loss plus some form of regularization on W. Okay? And we're going to use uh, uh, essentially convenience norm on W, but we're not restricted to this particular regularizer. Uh, we'd like to learn nonlinear transformations. So far, I've only talked about a linear map W, but it's actually possible to kernelize this. Um, and we have a paper that, if you're interested, uh, you'd like to see the details. So here's the summary of the approach. So far, we have some training data and the source and the target. We have some constraints based on these class labels. And at test time, we get a test point. We don't know which class it is. We apply the transformation that maps it to the source and we class it. <coughs> now, and here, as I mentioned before, what we're really interested in is transferring this um, what we've learned about the structure of the domain shift to new categories. So here we have a, uh, a new category shown in the, with the stars that we hadn't seen at training, so we didn't have constraints for that particular category. But we still apply um, the transformation the same way and classify it. In this case, I'm just showing classification using nearest neighbors. Okay, so this is nice because it allows us to sort of transfer our domain shift. Okay, so back to this problem of latent domains. So imagine that this is our target domain and we'd like to classify this image of the face. So we're going to compare it to images, for example, in the source domain, for example, this particular image. And we're going to use this using the learn transformation. Okay. And, but when we compare it to this particular image, notice that the images are actually quite different. One is a uh, drawing, another is a photograph. So the intuition uh, is that we actually might want to use different transformations to compare target examples to different subdomains or latent domains in the training data. Okay? And the problem is that we really don't know what they are. Um, so we'd like to learn them. So this is a very hard problem. Um, essentially, this was our previous um, objective function. So now we are going to introduce some number of latent domains, so S latent domains. And so now we're optimizing over a set of Ws, one W per latent domain, plus this vector of domain labels A, where there's one label per image that says which latent domain that image belongs. Um, and I keep saying image, but I mean, it could be applicable to other non So, um, So now we want to regularize the set of Ws, and we want to minimize the loss of the core, except now the loss is parameterized by this um, latent domain again. So as I said, this is a difficult problem to optimize. So what we're actually going to do is iterate between solving each sub problem. So we're First, we're going to find the A variables. So we're going to find the latent domain labels. And then we're going to fix them and solve for the Ws. Okay. So I'm just 
going to show a, an overview of the algorithms that we use for <coughs> solving for the A, so solving for the weight for the matrix. So we start with, with some source data that we know probably contains weight domains. And first we separate them by class, by category. So here we have uh, people and here we have bicycles. And now for each category, for each task, we're going to apply clustering to obtain S, called super points, S clusters. So the, the means of these clusters are going to meet the super points that are used in the next level. It's going to be a hierarchical clustering algorithm. Okay? So these are our super points. And at the next step, we're going to cluster these super points now into domains, but we're going to use some constraints when we do this. And the reason we need to do constraint clustering is because if we just cluster images without any constraints, what's going to happen is images of the same category are going to tend to cluster together. So instead of latent domains, we might get essentially categories. So we're going to get a face cluster and a bicycle cluster, and that's not what we want. Okay, so, but with the constraint clustering, which I'll describe on the next slide, what we essentially want to get is a uh, latent domain like this, which includes some people and some bicycles, um, uh, this example of drawing, drawings latent domain, and another latent domain that has images. Okay. So for the constraint clustering step, um, what we want to do is, given the super points that I was showing in the previous slide, each of which has a mean mij, um, we want to minimize the subjective function, where we are minimizing the, uh, essentially the k-means subjective function for these super points, <coughs> but with do not link constraints. And the constraints basically say that we, we don't want to link two super points if they come from the same category. So it's a, it's a very simple, it's a very simple idea. Essentially, we say we don't want to put. Um, um, sorry, uh, we, 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 we don't want to put this cluster um, together with this cluster because they come from the same category. Okay, because we want we want these super points to go to different latent domains. Okay? So essentially, we're sort of trying to constrain this to not cluster along along categories. Okay, so on to some experiments. Um, so I'm going to show experiments with the Bing and Caltech 56 data set that I was showing earlier. And by the way, all these data sets are available, so if any of you are interested, please talk to me. And, and then we're going to use another data set called Office data set, which has 31 categories of common objects that one could find in Office. And to that, so the three domains in that in that office data set are Amazon <coughs> domain, uh, DSLR, camera images, and webcam images. And then we're also uh, going to add two syn synthetic domains where we took the Amazon images and rotated them and flipped them, and we took the, the webcam images and blurred them. Okay, so here are the results of clustering on the Office Plus 2 data set. So the white bars is our method with constraint hierarchical clustering. And then we have two baselines. One is a simple k-means baseline. And you see here that our method does much better, for especially for some of the domain shifts. Um, so here, there's just different combinations of domains, uh, two domains each for each of these group of bars. So here, for example, for Amazon and Blurred Webcam, we're much better at separating those two domains. So here, we're, of course, pretending that we don't have domain links. We're throwing, throwing them out. We're just using them for evaluation. So now that we've been trying to use our algorithm with this on this data set, uh, here, here are the results. And so here I'm showing the, uh, the increase or the difference, the increase in the accuracy when using our method relative to a uh, baseline method that does not use any transformation, does not use any domain adaptation. Okay, so uh, for some of the combinations of domains, for example, here and here, we're doing much better than just you know, using a single transformation without trying to learn latent domains. 
and then for certain other combinations, um, there's sort of not not a lot of improvement. Um, we're doing about the same. And here are some results on the Bing Caltech. So here we're training on the web search data and testing on the Caltech six data. And the x-axis here is just showing uh, some parameter that we can vary that controls how much we uh, want to optimize the loss function. And so, and the, so the red is our method, and we're doing better than the uh, baseline method. Which, which loss function? The clustering loss function? Oh no, sorry. This is the similarities. This is the actual data loss function. <coughs> so why wouldn't you want to? I mean, it's like a regularization parameter. So, um, in conclusion, we extended our transform-based <coughs> method to include multiple domains and introduced a way to uh, discover latent domains. And in the future, we'd like to think about um, certainly ways to include more unlabeled target data into our method. And um, also, we'd like to consider different loss functions, for example, instead of uh, similarity losses that I talked about, maybe use hinge loss uh, or something more similar to discriminative.